Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Let's Make It Better. Today, we're gonna to be turning this pile of yard waste into charcoal. This is a great fall day project and a good excuse to hang out by a fire all afternoon in the yard. If you're gonna make charcoal, you need something to turn into charcoal and that is hardwood. So behind me is a pile of oak from this oak tree. You're gonna to wanna to have it in smaller bite-sized chunks, whether it's split or it's firewood or whatever. Surface area is a big deal in the charcoal making process. Now you're also going to need enough wood for four to eight hours of burning. We have another more different pile of yard waste and if that runs out, we still have more than enough of this. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, this process does involve fire. So you need the fire acumen of at least a Weebelow Scout, What's a weeble? Or a brownie. You need to understand fire safety, how to build a fire, weather conditions, and you know, potentially your zoning rules. I would not do this in your townhome complex. Oh, yay, homeowners association. Homeowners association may frown upon that. And as every Weebelow scout would know, this fire needs to be attended. So this is, just call it an all day process, but that's the fun of it. The last thing you need is a vessel. What we have here is a metal trash can. I picked it up at the big box home improvement stores. It was $34. It's been used several times for just this process. Now, if you look on the internet, there are more complicated and more efficient ways to make charcoal, but what we're doing here is not really looking for efficiency. We're looking for simplicity, and that's what we have here. There's a surprisingly large amount of YouTube videos on how to split wood, and they're all pretty good. Uh, I'd never really done it before this process. It has a lot to do with just making sure the ax hits the middle of the thing. But you know, you guys can check those out. We're gonna take our split wood, and we're gonna jam it into this trash can and stack it as tightly as we possibly can. We don't want a lot of air in the trash can, that's the idea, more wood than air. We have two modifications to this trash can a hole in the top and a hole down at the bottom. That's really all it needs. You need some airflow through it and you need the wood gases to get out. All right, so now it's time to start the fire. So this is also your Cub Scout level stuff. Remember, before you start your fire, check your weather conditions, make sure it's not gonna be a windy day and make sure that you got the time to attend to it. If plans change in the middle of the day, just grab a hose and put it out. That's it, right there. So essentially what's gonna happen is this fire is going to cook our hardwood oak in an oxygen depleted environment, and that's gonna make our charcoal. Now once the little stuff burns off, the fire is gonna get a lot less dramatic. Uh, and we'll keep fueling it with the larger and larger logs once we have a good bed of coals. And then we watch it and we hang out by a fire all day. Now, there are a bunch of videos out there that show much more efficient and ergo much more elaborate charcoal making apparatus size, apparatuses, apparatus I, apparatus I, apparatuses. Anyway, but for us, efficiency is not really the name of the game. We're doing two things at once here. We are making charcoal while we get rid of yard debris. So what you can see screaming out of here, this whiter smoke looking stuff is steam. Basically it is cooking the moisture out of all of the wood that's inside the barrel. The wood's not catching fire because there's not enough oxygen in there to burn inside that. And oxygen is clearly, as we, we below scouts know, an essential part of a fire. All right, so we've been going about two hours or so you can see we've made a huge dent in the amount of yard waste around. We're even burning some of the bigger stuff out of the big pile, which is fine by me. But you can see this fire is extremely hot at this point, but it's not generating a ton of flame or a ton of smoke. It is just cooking along. I'm gonna try to bring you in, but like it's, like I said, it's crazy hot, but maybe you can see right around the edge of the trash can, there's a little bit of flame sneaking out of there. That is the wood gases burning off. Basically we're superheating the wood in there it's releasing all of the flammable gases, which is also fueling the fire. And that's gonna leave us with nothing but charcoal. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, despite the weather forecast, we just had a downpour. About 30 minutes out of nowhere where it just came down. Now you will notice a couple of things. First things first, our fire is kind of out, but it is in no way out, like safety fire out. There is, that's a half hour of hard rain, still didn't put this out. So just keep that in mind, you know, if you're doing this kind of thing at home. So we were roughly four and a half hours, five hours into this project. So I think I'm gonna reach in there and lift up this barrel. Now to do that, I am using welding gauntlets. These are not the end all be all for protection from burns, but they are the best gloves you can get. And I am familiar with this process. So we're gonna, we're gonna see what we got at this point and see if we need to add a bunch of fuel to this, get it back going, or if we are good and we have charcoal. It looks like we indeed have charcoal. Now I've taken the lid off and it's still hot, which means that's going to combust. So I gotta get the lid back on. We gotta smother the fire. So you can already see it starting to glow down there. So after roughly five hours, we indeed have turned our wood into charcoal with this fire. Here we are a day later. Everything's cooled. We have gotten rid of a ton of yard waste and made a dent in that pile indeed. And here we are with a trash can full of charcoal. Now here's the thing about this stuff. Even after it's been sitting for a day, I would not Make sure you put the lid back on it. I did have an incident one time where I guess there was just enough chemical reaction still reactioning that once I introduced oxygen, boy howdy, did that chemical reaction continue and increase in speed. So basically the charcoal started burning from the bottom up. Like not a big thing, but I noticed some smoke and was like, hmm, well, I'm wasting charcoal. So let it sit for a few days in a closed environment or douse it pretty well with water. It will still be usable. Well, gang, since it's a lovely evening, there's nothing to do but to use our new charcoal. Now, I prefer cooking over charcoal just because I like the ceremony of the whole thing. No offense, Hank Hill, taste the meat, not the heat. With this stuff, works the same as everything else. Just load up my little charcoal guy. This charcoal is just trees, right? There's no additives, no special chemistry, no ingredients that, you know, you may or may not have been aware of when you buy the little briquettes. I'm not saying, like, I don't know what's in there, gang, but you know what's in here. Now, I jam the lid on it for the next couple days, just in case. Now, I always recommend you light the fire with good news, so I keep the funny papers around just for that. All right, while that gets going, I will say, if cooking on charcoal is not your bag, I have it on good authority that this stuff makes great biochar. Smash it up into little pieces, mix it with your favorite fertilizer and some water, spread it around your garden. I hear it does wonders. Around here we cook with it, but you know, it's a great way to get rid of yard waste that isn't driving it across town. There you have it, gang. Charcoal from a trash can and some yard waste. It's a great way to spend a day, especially as fall goes on and on and on. If you enjoyed this or found it informative, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It's how the YouTube world goes around, and we will see you next time on Let's Make It Better.